Um, If you would please, let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter and the 31st verse. John 13 and 31. When you found the place, or if you're going to follow along on the screen, uh, if you are able, please let us rise for the reading of Scripture. John 13 and 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will see me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Would you bow your hearts with me, please, for just a moment? Blessed and holy Lord, in these next few moments, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O God, my rock and my Redeemer. Amen. This morning is the fifth Sunday of Easter. For the last several weeks, we've been hanging out in the end of the Gospel of John. And the only bit of the Gospel, the end of the Gospel of John that we have yet to cover is the Ascension, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks. But I wanted to stick with John for a little bit longer for a couple of reasons. One, that we've already been here for a while. And two, we're getting to see a lot of John's unique style and theme here. Now, as we've said, John was the last gospel written. It was probably written between 94 and 96 A.D. The temple fell in the siege of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. when the Roman governor Titus Vespasian, who would later become the emperor of Rome, entered Jerusalem with three Roman legions and laid waste to most of it. This happened because of the first Jewish-Roman war, which which began in roughly 66 AD. Now, in 68 AD, the Jews drove the Romans out of Jerusalem. Up until that point, Christianity had been a sect of Judaism. Just like Methodism is a sect of Christianity, Christianity had been a sect of Judaism. But when the Jews went to war in 66, the Christians refused to fight with them. And when we did, they kicked us out of their synagogues. They went on to fight against the Romans and drove the Romans out of Jerusalem in 68 A.D., From 68 to 70 A.D., Jerusalem was fully under Jewish control. One of the very first things they did when they had control of Jerusalem was to execute James, the Lord's brother, because he was the leader of the church at Jerusalem. But as we said, the Romans return in 70 A.D. and they destroy the city, including the temple. During the siege of Jerusalem, the temple catches fire and is burned. Vespasian, the Roman commander, had promised to bring the gold of the temple back as a tribute to the Roman emperor. But in the fire, the gold had melted and some of it had gone between the stones in the floor and in the walls. So Vespasian ordered the temple to be dismantled brick by brick. The gold collected and the stones thrown down from the Temple Mount, precisely filling Christ's prophecy in Matthew 24, uh, which says, uh, but he answered them, um, 
You see all these, do you not? Truly, I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. The Gospel of John is written roughly 25 years after the fall of the temple and the end of Second Temple Judaism. 25 years is a long time, easily long enough for the gospel to spread among the neighboring nations. It's telling, I think, to do a search of the word Jew in the four gospels. It appears 83 times in the English Standard Version, five times in Matthew, six times in Mark, four times in Luke, and... 68 times in the Gospel of John. Why? Because John is not writing to a Jewish audience. He doesn't need to explain Jewish customs as he does in John 6, 4. Or he, he, I'm sorry, he needs to explain Jewish customs as he does in John 6, 4, which reads, Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. You don't need to tell the Jews that Passover is a feast of the Jews. They've been doing it their whole lives. They, they know full well. Who doesn't know that Passover is a feast of the Jews? Well, most of the Gentiles in the world. The first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are called the Synoptic Gospels. It's an academic word which means visually similar. Matthew, Mark, and Luke share a lot of content. Something like 80% of the Gospel of Mark is recreated word for word in Matthew and Luke. John's Gospel is different. It records almost none of the miracles that the Synoptic Gospels record. The only miracles shared in, the only miracles shared in all four Gospels are the feeding of the 5,000 and the resurrection. This is also why we, as non-Jewish believers, relate so well to John's gospel. It was written for people like us. Often, when we give someone a new Bible, we recommend that they start reading in the gospel of John. Because its style and content are designed to very clearly show that Jesus is God from the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And also that God himself came, died on a cross, and forgave our sin through his sacrifice. Now, with that background in mind, let's look at the text. This morning, we're looking at this strange passage where Christ says, A new commandment I give to you. And that new commandment is this, that you love one another as I have loved you. And we look at this passage, and if we don't think too much about it, we say, oh, how lovely, and we move on. Yeah, we know that Christ loves us, and we're supposed to love one another, and everyone should love their neighbor and wake up, wake up. Don't fall asleep just yet. I know there's nothing new there. There's nothing interesting. The Christian faith is founded on love. God loves us. We are to love one another. The Christian faith is founded on love because the Jewish faith is founded on love. As we read in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18, you shall not take vengeance or bear, grud bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. That's weird. Moses said that 1,500 years before Jesus said it. In John 13 and 34, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. But Jesus calls it a new commandment, and Moses said it 1,500 years ago. Is Jesus wrong on this? Is he did he, did he forget his Torah lessons? No, dearly beloved, he did not. First, let's establish the context of the passage. Our text today comes from the 13th chapter of John. In the 11th chapter, 
John tells us of the resurrection of Lazarus at Bethany, a short walk across the Kidron Valley from Jerusalem. So the, the physical location is important. When you stand at Bethany, which is where the Mount of Olives is, you can, you can look down the hill and back up the next hill. It's a mile away to the Temple Mount. When I was there in 2018, I was wandering around the Garden of Gethsemane and I was sore and tired and hot and hungry. And this cab driver, whose name was Wally, Wally, Wally wanted me to make sure that I hired his cab to take me back to town. So Wally followed me through the garden. At one point, I stopped to to take a picture of of myself, to take a selfie in the garden with the the olive trees in the background, and Wally photobombed me. He jumped in. I had this picture of Wally, the cab driver. So when I was done in the Garden of Gethsemane, I turned around, and Wally was right there, and I said, all right, let's go. And we went to his car, and he said, where do you want to go? And I thought for a minute, and I said... I was kind of dumb. I was, I was not very familiar with the geography of Jerusalem. I thought for a minute and I said, I want to go to the Western Wall. And Wally said, 20 shekels. And I said, done. I, pulled, well, I got in the car and I pulled the 20 shekel bill out and I put it on, the, on the, the dash. And we drove down the valley, back up, and we were done. Yeah. So, so Jesus is, is in Bethany at the, garden, at, the Mount of, at the Garden of Gethsemane on the Mount of Olives. And he's a very short walk from Lazarus' tomb to Jerusalem. Now in chapter 12, we have the triumphal entry where Jesus enters Jerusalem riding on the back of a colt. The rest of chapter 12 is filled with some teachings of Christ. And in the beginning of chapter 13, we have the washing of the feet and the Last Supper where Judas betrays him. Bam, bam, bam. All of these events happen very close together. Now we know that the Last Supper happens the night before Jesus is betrayed, or the night that Jesus is betrayed, the night before the crucifixion. So... So the, in, 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 at the Last Supper, the disciples are asking Jesus which of them is going to betray him. And after a brief exchange, Judas gets up and goes out into the night. So in verse 31 of our primary text says, when he had gone out, it's speaking of Judas, who just left to betray Jesus. The passage that we're reading takes place at the Last Supper. With that setting in mind and putting this teaching into context, I think it becomes abundantly clearer what Jesus is saying here. We like to pull Bible verses out of context as if the Bible were simply a random book of sayings that we can use however we see fit. But pulling this verse out of context makes it confusing. It looks like Jesus is giving us a new commandment By telling us the same thing Moses told us 1,500 years ago, he's not. He's telling us something that Moses did not tell us. Let me illustrate what I mean. By CNA staff, the 2nd of May, 2020, 3.30 p.m., ACI Africa, a man claiming... To have killed a murdered Nigerian seminarian, Michael Nandi, or Nadi, has given an interview in which he says he executed the expiring, aspiring priest because he would not stop announcing his Christian faith in captivity. Mustafa Mohammed, who is currently in jail, gave a telephone interview to the Nigerian newspaper Daily Sun on Friday. He took responsibility for the murder, according to the Daily Sun, because Nadi, 18 years old, continued preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to his captors. 
According to the newspaper, Mustafa's, Mustafa praised Nadi's outstanding bravery and that the seminarian, quote, told him to his face to change his evil ways or perish, end quote. Nadi was kidnapped by gunmen from Good Shepherd Seminary in Kaduna on January 8th along with three other students. The seminary, home to some 270 seminarians, is located just off of the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Expressway. According to AFP, the area is, quote, notorious for criminal gangs kidnapping travelers for ransom, end quote. Mustafa, 26, identified himself as the leader of a 45-member gang that prayed along the highway, P-R-E-Y-E-D, prayed along the highway, he gave the interview from a jail in Abuja, Nigeria, where he is in police custody. On the evening of the abduction, gunmen, disguised in military camouflage, broke through the fence surrounding the seminarian's living quarters and opened fire. They stole laptops and phones before kidnapping the four young men. Ten days after the abduction, one of the four seminarians was found at the side of the road, alive but seriously injured. On January 31st, an official at Good Shepherd Seminary announced that two other seminarians had been released, but that Nadi remained missing and was presumed still in captivity. On February 1st, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka of the Diocese Sokoto, Nigeria, announced that Nadi had been killed. With a very heavy heart, I wish to inform you that our dear son, Michael was murdered by the bandits on a date we cannot confirm, the bishop said, confirming that the rector of the seminary had identified Nadi's body. The newspaper reported that from the day Nadi was kidnapped alongside his other colleagues, he did not allow Mustafa to have peace because he insisted on announcing the gospel to him. According to the newspaper, Mustafa did not like the confidence displayed by the young man and decided to send him to an early grave. Michael Nadi, an 18-year-old Nigerian man, was captured by bandits. Along with three other men who attended the same seminary, the other three were eventually released, but Nadi refused to stop preaching the gospel, and they killed him for it. Nadi loved his captors more than he loved his own life. And he spent the last moments of that life sharing Jesus with them. When Jesus tells his apostles to love one another as I have loved you, it really is a new commandment. It really is something they haven't heard before. They may not understand it at that point but they would shortly. Moses told us to love one another in the same way that we love ourselves, but Jesus pushes that much, much further. Love your neighbor more than yourself. Do what is, in the end, best for your neighbor, even if it costs you everything. This is what Jesus himself did for us. God becomes man, born of a virgin in a desert nation on the far side of the world. He grew and worked and toiled to provide for his mother and his siblings. He gathered disciples, taught, and was executed for it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That is, Jesus Christ, the greatest man who ever lived, gave himself on a cross to make a way for us to be reconciled to him. And now that we are, now that we are reconciled to him, now that our salvation is sealed in his hands, we have nothing to lose. I don't mean once saved, always saved, but I do mean this, that if we continue in our belief in Christ, if we continue in our faith that the rest is in his capable hands, and that frees us. It frees us to love one another the way Christ loved us. To give all that we have to give, to love one another in the same way that he 
who went to the cross for us, loved us. Love sacrificially. Give generously, believe entirely, love one another in the same way that Christ has loved you. Amen. Let's bow our hearts.